is really actually complementary to Professor Cacho's. Um, we are interested in the same thing. How should we be searching for an invasive species? Um, but in this case, we don't use search so much to increase the detectability of an individual target so much as we use search to improve our estimate of the existing population in an area. So the motivation of this paper is how do managers of invasive species determine how much to be spending on search when we don't know how many snakes or plants or frogs or whatever are in the area of interest. And specifically for this paper, we use the motivation of the brown tree snake. Um, and we're going to think about searching for the brown tree snake in a place that we think there's already a small population, and that's the island of Saipan. So if a population is unknown of invasive species, there's actually two benefits to doing search, right? So you go out and search, and you might actually catch something. So that's the direct benefit of search. So you're actually reducing the population by searching. But the second benefit, if you don't know how many snakes are in Saipan, when you're searching, you're actually getting now more reliable estimates of the population. Because if you catch something, then you know for sure that there's a population. If you don't catch something, there still might be a population, but you don't know. So the objective of the study is to provide a methodology that takes into account both of these benefits. Because most of the time, all we think about is that direct benefit. If we go out and search and catch something, then we reduce the population. But we need to also be thinking about the benefits of that indirect, um, indirect benefit of learning from searching. And then finally, we're going to apply that methodology to the case of the brown tree snake on the island of Saipan. And so our model begins with the premise that if we actually know the population of the invasive species, then we know how to spend on search efforts. OK, because what we're going to do is just take the expected total costs of search and the expected damages from the population that is on the island and minimize them over time. Um, and from that problem, we can get a solution that says, well, the marginal benefits of search should equal the marginal cost, where the marginal benefits is just those avoided damages in the future and those avoided search costs in the future. But the problem is we don't ever really know the population of an invasive species, right, most of the time. Um, so for example, this is the population distribution, subjective probability distribution of how many snakes are on the island of Saipan. So this is a group of um, experts that know a lot about the brown tree snake problem on Saipan. And so as you can see, there's a really good chance that there are somewhere between two and 10,000 snakes on Saipan. Those are those really <laughs> long bars in the middle. There's a really small chance that there's either zero or exactly one snake, and there's not a very high chance that there's more than 10,000. So this is all we know about the population on Saipan. Now, what can we do with that original distribution of population? Can we make this better? That's what the paper is aiming to do. So each year, people go out and they search for snakes. They either catch them or they don't, OK? But most of the time, we do that, and then we stop. But actually, every time we go out and search, we can use the information, how much we spend when we go out and search, how much we think there are, and we can actually update what we think as far as the population on Saipan. And here's the idea, right? If, if we think that we know how much we're supposed to get 
when we spend a certain amount of money, then what we actually get gives us information. So here's the example. If it costs about $100,000 to catch one snake if there's 10, okay, say we do some trials and we think that that's what it costs. It costs 100000 to catch one if there's 10 snakes on an island. Okay, but you, you go out and you only spend, say, half of that, spend $50,000, but you catch two. Well, there's probably more than 10 snakes, right? Because you are only supposed to be able to catch one spending a whole bunch of money. Now, if you spend even more money, say twice as much, 200000 and you don't catch any, well, there's probably less than 10 snakes. And that's the intuition that this paper tries to formalize and says, when we go out on these expensive searches on Saipan, we've done a couple here in Hawaii, how do we use the information from those searches to better inform our estimates of population in an area? Okay, so everybody's probably taken statistics at one point, like it or not. So do you remember the cookie jars? There's two jars of cookies. You got, you know, chocolate chip and plain. Char jar one has 10 chocolate chip cookies, and 30 plain, jar two has 20 of each. So this is basically how we do updating. We use this thing called Bayes' rule. And this is how it works. So there's 80 cookies all together. Now what's the probability that a cookie was drawn from jar one if that cookie is a plain cookie? Now, do you remember how to do this? There's a really handy formula for fi figuring out that probability. Right, and that formula is given on the bottom there. So the probability that the cookie was drawn from jar one, okay, so that's the yellow jar, given that it's a plain cookie. Well, first we need to know what's the probability of both happening. So the fa drawing from jar one and being a plain cookie. Well, that's the intersection, right? And there's 30 of those. So 30 over 80, that's 3 eighths. That's the numerator. Okay, now what about probability of B, plain cookie? Well, how many plain cookies are there? There's 50, right? We can just add them together. 50 over 80 is 5 eighths. We just do the division and it's 60%. So we have a probability, okay? We use this exact same logic and reasoning to do updating for population, okay? We just rewrite the formula a little bit. It's the same thing as that last line and we get Instead of cookies and jars, we now have population sizes and how many we catch. So what's the probability that, we, that the population is size X given that we catch Y snakes? It's the exact same reasoning. Um, and every element in this formula we can actually get either through experiments, science experiments, interviewing, um, and then the other thing we need is just our belief from the previous year. So like that first thing, conditional probability of catch given population X. We actually have a good idea of capture probability if we spend a lot of money. Um, scientists on Guam from Fort Collins have done a series of experiments and we're working with them now to actually get that data and, and do this exact kind of updating. Um, so we know if we spend this amount of money, then we should get this amount of snakes. Um, so we use that information combined with our old beliefs about um, the population, and then we can update every year given that we catch so many snakes. So here's the idea. Say in the first year, there's actually 100 snakes. Okay, so the red line is how many snakes there actually are. Now, of course, nobody knows this except those snakes, right? Um, but we think, say our probability distribution is way out here, we think there's a lot more. So the mean is much higher, it's around 240 or so. Um, and the distribution is really wide. We think, you know, it could be really anything. Um, but we do this updating, and then by the fifth year, the snakes are still growing, because of course we're not managing this optimally because we don't have a good estimate of the population, but our mean is getting closer to the actual population and the distribution is actually shrinking. It's getting smaller. So we're getting better estimates as we go on, as we update our understanding of the population. And then finally, say in 10 years, our, you know, our understanding of how many snakes there are becomes 
really close to what it actually is because we're doing this Bayesian updating every period. Okay, so to move on to the case study, um, hopefully most of you went to what I'm sure was an excellent talk by Jim Stanford on Wednesday about SS Saipan, which was um, a recent effort on Saipan to search very rigorously for snakes around the airport. Um, to give you a background, if you don't know about brown tree snakes on Saipan, as of this year, there have been 76 credible sightings, um, 13 actual captures of the brown tree snake. So in other words, there's a really high probability that there's an established population there. Um, SS Saipan was 21 nights in the spring of this year, 49 searchers, but they came up with nothing. Okay, now what could we do with that information? And, and that's what this talk is really about. Um, to say what, what's a better or what's the optimal search strategy for a place like Saipan. So what we did in this paper is we simulated the, the population and the costs and the damages on Saipan. So we came up with how much it costs to go out and search for snakes, how, how much we expect in future damages from snakes on Saipan. Um, and we conducted simulations comparing if we learn, if we do this Bayesian updating that I've talked about versus if we don't do it. And then the total cost of those two programs. Um, so we, we computed the cost of the two programs. We ran a thousand replica replications of 20 year time horizons for both learning and not learning um, on Saipan. Okay, the results out of a thousand trials, um, the no learning scenario was only better than the learning scenario 41 times. So once in a while you'll get lucky and that even though you're not doing this updating, you know, you might be spending enough or a sufficient amount anyway. So out of a thousand trials, 41 times, it was actually okay that you weren't doing it. But on average, with learning, your program is costing about $13 million altogether. If you're not doing the Bayesian updating, you're spending almost six times as much, closer to $80 million. And the reason is because when you're learning, you have more flexibility to adapt. Okay, I think there's this many, so I should be spending more. Okay, we got most of them last year, so let's reduce spending. And so you're spending more efficiently if you have a better estimate of the population. And just to give you a couple illustrative trials, remember there was a thousand trials we ran, and I just picked two of them to show you um, kind of the learning versus no learning. And this graph is showing you the actual population of the snake in these simulations. So under no learning, in this scenario, we're, we're not spending enough at all. And so what happens is there's a species explosion. That dotted green line is when we're not doing the Bayesian updating. So we're not doing enough effort. The snakes are growing really fast. and um, Whereas that if we're actually learning, the population is staying flat, it's staying low. If you look at the scale, though, this is, you know, 500,000 is at the top. So even though it looks like no snakes, that doesn't mean there's actually, we're keeping it at zero. I think it's around like 300 we're keeping it at. But we're learning about the population, so we're spending more wisely. Um, and without learning, it's actually 500% more expensive than when we're doing the Bayesian updating under the learning scenario in this trial. Now, that's not always the case. In the second um, trial I'm gonna show you is you're actually spending more than you wanna be spending and you actually get rid of all of the snakes in say 50, this is actually in months. So in 50 months, all the snakes are gone. Now that sounds good, right? And that we like that. But the problem is because we're not doing updating and we don't realize that we got rid of all the snakes, we're still spending all this money, right? Whereas if we were learning about it and doing the updating, we would, we would decrease our efforts, maybe not to zero, but down a little bit. So without learning, it's 8% it's worse than with learning. So it's not nearly as bad as not doing enough effort. Um, but still, if we, can, if we do some learning, then we're gonna save some money that could be spent on another invasive species program, for example. So in conclusion, um, the average social cost when we do Bayesian updating with learning is only a sixth of the cost with learning in our simulations of Saipan. Um, 
And as the last two slides just showed you, the cost of not doing enough effort is, of course, much worse than doing too much, at, you know, compared to what our learning indicates. Um, and this implies that our traditional frameworks that we do and we see a lot in management, assuming that we already know the population, will not lead to efficient management strategies and that the value of information due to this learning can be very large. And just a couple of reminders why we care about getting those darn snakes. And thanks to U.S. Fish and Wildlife for funding, um, University of Hawaii, and Earl, Nate, and the gang for support. Thanks a lot. Apane, my pahai, ke ya mamoe.